This one never stopped, never asked to take a break, never said she couldn't do anything. At the end of that day, it was just, it was clear we'd found her. We had literally found Mulan after over a year of searching everywhere around the world. Hi Vanity Fair, I'm Nikki Caro and I'm the director of Disney's Mulan. Hi, I'm Yifei and I play Mulan. Hi, my name is Jason Ann and I play Hong Hui. This, this is, is no Notes on, on a Scene. scene. <laughs>
that's a little confusing for some of them, particularly the ones that aren't very mm -hmm. bright. When we prepare for a sequence like this, it's not just preparing the choreography, but preparing the bodies and the minds and the stamina of the people that are going to be doing the work. So these two and the other guys you see in the scene were in physical training for intense physical training for three months. Yes, or longer actually. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that person? <laughs> I think we, we uh, you know, on top of stunt training, which was like maybe two to three hours a day. We for also... you, two to three hours? Not for me. Because oh. you were I'm better longer. than him. You're longer? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh you mean, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> but, but we went through similar training. Um, we did strength and conditioning on top of that, which actually got us, got us into that warrior spirit. What you see here is really through our training. Yeah, it yeah. means you guys can walk onto set and be mm. really well prepared, not just physically right. and not just with the, cho with the choreography, but critically emotionally yeah. prepared you can yeah. they can drop in from the 21st century to True. ancient china this is actually a very complicated sequence to shoot because it requires two actors two stunt doubles three cameras pretty much three camera positions so we are looking this way of course uh, to mm. mulan we're looking this way to Honghui, and we are um, we've got the camera kind of traveling very quickly down the track behind these spears, which is this really kind of amazingly graphic and strobey image. And it means it's possible for me to um, use your mm -hmm. stunt double, Yashi, in one of those shots. And that is Yashi on camera. Um, but because we've got the, the strobing of the spears in the front of the lens, we totally get away with it. Mm -hmm. When you're scheduling a scene like this, as much as I would have liked to do all of it in the main unit, I my schedule only um, allows me to be shooting the actors, not the stunt people. So it's almost like sort mm -hmm. of embroidery, trying to get all the shots correct and have two units shooting the same size shots with different performers in the same lighting conditions over two days, which is really difficult, yeah. as we know in New Zealand, yeah. because the weather changes yeah. so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, still enjoying yourself, Yosin, mm. yeah. <laughs> but not for too much longer. This is an interesting move, um, because this is where you see male strength, like get that spear in there and just yeah. like kick the spear out of your hands. And she's having none of it. The rhythm is so good. The mm. rhythm is telling the mood. Yeah. And all of that is worked out like months before we keep refining it and keep refining it. So when we get on set and we've only got a certain amount of hours to do our work, mm. that we're not going, oh, what if we did this or what if we did this? This movie was not made like that. Look at how focused she is. She's, yeah, and you too, my friend. <laughs> I'm like, well, she's going to throw at me next. <laughs> yeah, so now it's very, very intense between them. And you can see from... The reactions of our other guys here, good, okay. doing well, possibly not quite looking at the right place. But Is he okay. looking at the camera? He, he might be, <laughs> points off. <laughs> this one, very good. And a lot of those are stunt people, they're, they're our kung fu masters. And then additionally, there are a bunch of extras. In this scene, there was about a hundred, I think. This movie is very costume driven. Costume is incredibly important in this part of the movie because we're talking about um, all the guys coming to training camp and starting to learn how to wear armor. Mm. This is your practice mm. armor, right? There's a pra it's yeah. a lot lighter mm -hmm. than the actual armor. Yeah. There's the shoulder piece here. Uh, and then there's a chest piece, and then there's also the yeah. one that guards the quads, but also... And you've got the oh, wrist yeah. guards. This is connected to here, this is connected to here, that's how they wrap it. Yeah. Mm. So that, yeah. the first time it took 40 minutes to put on, but as time minutes, yeah. passed, it's getting mm. faster, but still mm. like take take about an hour, uh, <laughs> half an hour. It, it takes a while, but it looks really good. Yeah, it mm. looks good. <laughs> and also you can't, you have to remember this, this takes a while too. Mm. That, and that's really, that was genius. Um, our costume designer, Bina Dagler, came up with this idea because of course all men in that time had really long hair, therefore went up in a top knot. To, wi to make wigs for the hundreds of people we mm. needed to make wigs for was it just wasn't a possibility. So these head wraps became part of the costume where there's a little, like mm -hmm. a little, a little 
cup and it was, underneath it. It was, like, it was like a straw cup to yeah. emulate the hair bun. Yeah. So. I have a real one. You've got yeah. a real <laughs> top yeah. knot. Um, and you guys had wigs yes. um, underneath those, um, but everybody else had uh, the, the head wrap. Even though this movie is an action movie and the action's explosive and it's very raw and very visceral, it was also as important to me to make a movie that was very beautiful, like photographically yeah. beautiful. Along with the stunning landscapes, um, we have a production design that is both incredibly and intensely colorful in the Imperial City. Mm -hmm. uh, when Mulan mm -hmm. gets dressed for the matchmaker, it's, it's really gorgeous. But then when Mulan goes to war in the middle of the movie, we go into this very sort of monochromatic environment and the predominant color there is red. You can't see them so well here under the practice armor, but the tunic is red and it makes for really kind of graphic, stylized images. I really love the red because I think it's really Mulan with love, passion mm. and this strongness. Everyone came from their respective villages, right? And I think going into this world where everyone's dressed in the same way, dressed in the same red way, mm -hmm. that brings a certain energy. And as you've said, it brings a certain passion in terms of bring everyone together with the same mission. It is all about making everybody look the same, mm. you know, when you go into the army, whatever army it is. And the interesting thing is that amongst and amongst these thousands of men is this one young woman and she manages to disappear within mm -hmm. them. But a scene like this, where she shines a spotlight on herself, exposes her to potentially being found out, mm. yet she can't be anything but true mm -hmm. to herself and her emotions. They can really see this here, A, what an amazing still, <laughs> your amazing performance. And, and a lot of this movie is shot on really long lenses. And so you see Ife in focus and everybody else who are quite close to her out of focus behind her. And we, this is a lens um, called a Petzval lens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. our favorite, yeah. our favorite lens. It really kind of radically softens the outside, bringing all your focus mm. into the inside of the frame. And most mm. of the way we framed stuff was to frame Mulan Yifei like right at the center, mm. and the, so we would always use this lens on you. And it only in very, very extraordinary circumstances did we ever shoot anybody else with that lens because mm. it was all yours. You know standing on the side in front of the camera mm. uh, most of the time I couldn't actually see where the camera was because it was so far away because mm. the lens yeah. was so far yeah. you know. It's, it's a good point Yosin because mm. being on the longer lenses means the actors can perform and feel very free. I remember that scene when I need to ride a horse we, we have a group of people ride a horse mm. together forward mm. on that road, mm. one road. Mm. I'm like, there's no camera. No, it's because it was. Are a, we on a film set? <laughs> yeah. It was a 2800 mil lens. It was about as big as you. I see Jason, you know, crawling. <laughs> and then I see him eventually. He's like, and then he's because it's a low, um, low. Yeah. How do you say low shot? Low, low, low angle. Low angle. Yeah. yeah. And then ah, yeah. like, oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> we had two lenses built. One of which. The other special one, a 58 mil lens, Gauss lens, which had what, what you call a chromatic aberration in it, which will um, distort the shot. So there's almost like little mm. rainbows, little flary rainbows in. And what we were trying to do was express Mulan's chi, her power, and and this lens did it for us. Oh. So you see how. Um, how much the how much distortion is here? Yeah. How much softness here? But the focus is really. Yeah, I think this is the only shot right in this sequence that was on a wire. Yeah. To, yeah. So that she could leap high. Look at that. And then we whip pan back to your startled face, and here you see Mulan as Hua Jun realize what she's done, which is to put a spotlight on herself. With this movie, we tried we tried very hard to keep off wires. Um, a lot of martial arts movies right. employ a lot of wire work, but for us, and, and particularly for Milan, who's not a superhero, um, we wanted to ground the action mm -hmm. I, somewhat in the laws right. of physics. And so for me, it was like the beauty of seeing a, a strong, 
female body in action. When you are on a harness, sometimes it feels like, oh, you are, they're helping you, right? Because yeah. you're, 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 they're controlling you. But I feel like my method is I have to just do the exact move. Don't think about the wire and just to be you. So there mm. is, it's actually a part of your body, actually. Mm. So that way I feel like I can control the balance better and knowing which, where, when to land and knowing which direction I'm going. So the wires are up there, right? So That's the one where it, it's wrapped, right? And so then, one yeah. wire and then they wrap it so that you spin. So you basically use this leg and a little pull off and then it's that kind of move. Yeah, and all the wire does is is just you get some elevation, but the, f the force, the explosive force of the body is coming right through the hips. And you also have ballet, so mm. it meant for me, even though we had an amazing stunt double for Ife, often we would ask for Ife rather than the stunt double because in her body she has tremendous grace that goes with the strength and, and incredible extension. Because what she would do sometimes when we, when we went off the choreography was more instinctive and more beautiful. When we practice real martial arts, you're trying to hit that person to take the other person down. But here, I learned that you, you have to make sure you don't hit the other person <laughs> at all. <laughs> Where I turned around mm -hmm. this part, I struggled with this move so much. I, I think I did it, we shot it like five times, but I don't know, something like that. I finally got on six take and everyone clapped because <laughs> it was like a big achievement for me <laughs> to finally get that move. We had to make sure we worked together on this, this particular scene because edge of my spear was on Yifei's wrist and I didn't want to, you know. Oh, right, you, you don't want to, yeah, twist. I didn't want, exactly, because mm. it's, I mean, these are real weapons we're playing with, so. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they did have rubber tips, so just. Yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> I guess one of the big surprises, certainly for me, was how easily I came to action sequences. I really love them and um, I love everything about them, from the writing of them through the, uh, the designing of them and, and the constant kind of refinement of them in the planning stage. You know, there's a way to shoot them where you just, which is how action sequences are normally shot, which is just with a lot of coverage, just Coverage, 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 so you've always got that moment. And then there's the way we approach them. But what Mandy and I were doing with the camera was really explosive. In other sequences, we are kind of turning the camera mm. 180, 360 degrees in the middle of the shot. We're tipping the frame up on its side. We're doing all kinds of joyous and expressive things with the camera that um, just I mean, literally came out of the sheer joy of being able to do it and being able to play with these big toys. I had worked for Disney before. I made a movie called McFarland USA and they knew that I was a stalking fan of Mulan. Um, so they let me in, in the door, and it turned out that my vision for the live action version of Mulan, which is a, um, a huge, very real, epic action adventure movie was exactly what they were hoping a director would come through the door and provide. <laughs> Thanks very much Vanity Fair. We hope you enjoy Mulan. This has been Notes on a Scene.